Hey, welcome to Church Experience. Thank you so much for spending part of your weekend with us. Now's a great time to grab your pens and weeklies and head to your seats if you haven't already, because the service starts in 90 seconds. Welcome to CE Online. We are so happy to see you today, and I'm looking forward to today's impacting message. During the service, you may have some questions, comments, prayer requests. If so, go to churchexperience.tv.connect or pull out your camera app and scan the QR code to connect with us. Or you can even hit that subscribe button if you've always wanted to know more about what's going on here at CE. We're always glad to hear from you, get back to you, and be praying for you. Can you guess what time it is? Time to spend some time worshiping God through songs. Let's jump in, participate, and let God speak to us during this time. You were the word at the beginning, one with God, the Lord Most High. Your hidden glory in creation now revealed in you. What a beautiful name it is, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. So Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great, your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The What a wonderful name it is, the 
thousand stories of what they think you're like, but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night when you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone. You're good. pray that we won't forget that. I pray that no matter what it is that we're going through, we won't forget your goodness. What you've brought us through or what you will bring us through, God. 
You're so good. You're so faithful. We know that we can weather the storm because, God, you're protecting us. You're loving us. You're healing us. You're saving us. Thank you, God. I pray that we will never forget that, that we can keep our focus on you, the goodness of who you are and your promises, and the wonderful, powerful, mighty name of Jesus. You're perfect. God, I pray that you would touch us in a way that we've never experienced before. Touch us, Father. Come into our lives. Come into wherever it is that we're praising you now. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. My life before Jesus was just religiosity, kind of walking and wandering without a purpose, but knowing I was made for more, knowing that um, there was a God, a higher power, but not really knowing where I fit into his plan of creation. I grew up in a Catholic church and I went to church every Sunday um, and just hearing about God and, you know, had a religion class and but just really never fully understanding. I think I was even told one time by someone in my school that the Bible wasn't real and it was just a bunch of stories. And I just remember crushing my heart from a young age and just wondering, why are we even learning this then if it's not even real? It's one of the lowest times in, in my life and homeless with my husband and my children. And uh, that whole experience is where I really feel I encountered the true love of God. Probably a few weeks being in the homeless shelter, I was just so bitter and so angry and I really wanted nothing to do with God and I thought God had just forgotten us abandoned us and I was like I'm never gonna walk with God I'm, I'm I don't know why I did this and nobody wants to suffer like if I had a choice I would have my life done this way but um God is so gracious and beautiful and there's a purpose in any suffering you go through and you might not see it but God sees the entire uh the story that he's writing for you he's the author and perfecter of our faith so just trusting in him, you know, God provided, you know, God provided us with a home. He provided us with a, a vehicle not long after that. And I realized that the Lord was walking me through, you know, um, and <clears throat> building character in me and building um, hope, just like the, the Bible says. My life after knowing Jesus, just everything changed. The way that I see myself and my identity in Christ, the way that God loves me and what he's done for me on the cross through Jesus Christ. And I just have so much purpose and life just has meaning now um, in just such a powerful different way. And um, now I know we were made for more and I know exactly what it is that the Lord wants to do in and through us, which is to um, love God and love people. I started to see people in the most beautiful way and the way that God sees them. And it just made all the difference. And I said, I see what you're doing, God. And I'm sorry for questioning you and being upset and being angry, but I know that there's a plan and a purpose. And it doesn't mean it's easy and it doesn't mean that I won't have any other seasons, you know, but I encourage you that the Lord is always with you. He'll never leave or forsake you. And when you're grounded in that truth, it changes everything. I remember coming here with my husband, I think it's been a year now. And I remember just being so uncomfortable and scared. And But from the minute I walked in here, it's like the, and the love that I felt like immediately and people that I just first came into contact with, I just felt so accepted and you know, just so welcome. So when Pastor Brandon says, welcome home, I mean, you're, yeah, welcome home. And I felt in, it immediately like this bond with people that I had just like literally met. So now my husband and I lead a life group and you know, it's just been amazing. Just getting to know people even more. And I just love, love being at sea. And I'm so glad that the Lord brought us here and can't wait to see what, what else he's gonna continue doing through us. <laughs>
Have your Bibles, let's go to Genesis 26. I feel like preaching. Genesis 26. Genesis chapter 26. Yeah, Genesis 26. Genesis 26. Hallelujah. I want to welcome everybody out to church experience. Hallelujah. I pray everyone is having a great time in the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give God just a big hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 26. I still see some pages turning. You're worth the wait. I'm, we're going to start in five seconds. Five, four, Genesis 26, verse 16. I'm just going to read a few verses. Genesis 26, verse 16. And it reads, Then Abimelech said to Isaac, Move away from us. You have become too powerful for us. So Isaac moved away from there and encamped in the valley of Gerar where he settled. Isaac reopened the wells that had been dug in the time of his father Abraham, which the Philistines had stopped up after Abraham died. And he gave them some names his father had given them. Isaac's servants dug in the valley, discovered the well of fresh water there. But the herders of Gerar quarreled. They, they bickered. They argued. They fought against them. They quarreled with those of Isaac and said, this water is ours. So he named that well a sect because they disputed with him. Then they dug another well. Look at your neighbor and say, dig again. Come on, I said, look at your neighbor and say, dig again. Then they dug another well, but they quarreled over that one also, so that he named it Sitna. He moved on. Tap your neighbor and say, move on. Come on, tap another neighbor and say, move on. Touch a third neighbor and say, it's time to move on. He moved on from there and dug another well, and no one quarreled over it. So he named it Rehoboth, saying, Now the Lord has given us room, and we will flourish in that land. We will flourish in that land. Isaac was anointed to dig. Isaac was appointed to dig. He didn't dig just in times of plenty. Isaac dug, it talks about in the beginning of chapter in Genesis 26, that he dug in the midst of famine. Everybody say, I'm anointed to dig. Come on, say to yourself, say, I'm anointed to dig. Come on, tap yourself on the chest and say, I'm anointed to dig. That means you're called to dig. No matter the environment, many times we wait for um, for great times for us to pursue our cause, for us to pursue the assignment that God has for us. But Isaac had a boldness. I'm preaching too fast. Isaac had a confidence that said, I'm going to dig even in the midst of hard times. I'm going to dig in the midst of trouble. I'm going to dig in the midst of tribulation. I'm going to say it is well and if you're wondering what the subject is for today the subject is it is well it is well. I know the enemy wants to hit you uh, with so many things. Uh, like this is not going to happen. You're going to stay in famine. You're going to stay in this trouble. You're going to stay in this pit. You're going to stay in this dry place. It seems like you've been experiencing warfare uh, like never before. But tap yourself on the chest again and say, I'm anointed to dig. Now tap your neighbor and say, don't stop digging. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Don't uh, stop digging. Don't stop digging. I was preparing for this message. And one of my biggest passions, I love to study world-class leaders. I love to study change agents. I love to study people who have started from the bottom and now they are at the top of their industry. I love to study people like that. So I was reading an article from a Mississippi native. I'm from Mississippi. And her name is Oprah Winfrey. Anybody ever heard of Oprah? (laughs) In 1986, she had a interview when she just started her syndicated uh, talk show and she had the interview with uh, Mike Wallace and she uh, Mike Wallace asked how do you think your show is going to do and she said it, it'll do well that was her response. He said, it'll do well. He said, how do you know it's going to do do well? And then Oprah's response to it was, and if it doesn't, it will still do well. I will, I will do well because I'm not divine by the show. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, it, might, it will still do well because I'm going to do well. You have to know, uh, hallelujah, that when God backs you, uh, you are not a failure. Can I say I'm not a failure when God backs me? Hallelujah. The Bible says if God be for me, uh, who can uh, be uh, against me? Uh, so uh, Oprah had this tenacity. She had this boldness to say even if the show uh, does not uh, do well, hallelujah. She said she had a she had a, a confidence that said my job does not define my worth. Woo! Hallelujah. She had a she said what I do, hallelujah. My career does not define my my worth. She said it will do well. Oprah went on to become a billionaire. She has the longest running uh, talk show, uh, one of the longest daytime shows of all time. She has one of the highest rated uh, talk shows in history and has won over 47 daytime Emmy shows. Emmy Awards. If God can do that for Oprah, what can God do for you? Whew. She came from a small town called Kosciuszko, Mississippi. <laughs> what? Who can God raise up in Butler? Does anybody in the room have a dream? Put your hand in the air if you got a dream. Anybody got any vision? And the enemy will try to come in so many ways to say, hey, I'm from Butler. Can any, can a billionaire come out of Butler? Can any uh, great singer come out of Butler? And I come to encourage about a couple people on today, on this morning to say it is well and that you can stop digging. If you believe that, shout amen. It is well, it is well, it is well. She said, this job does not define me because I don't put my hope in my job. I put my hope in my provider. I put my hope in my God. And one thing, my job may fail me, make my career may fail me, but anybody know that Jesus won't fail you? Oh, man, hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so glad, hallelujah, that Jesus will not fail you, hallelujah. Point number one, you are a gift. You're a gift. Everybody say, I'm a gift. Hallelujah, you're a gift, hallelujah, hallelujah. You have to recognize, hallelujah, what the treasure that God has placed on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Stop looking for man's approval when God has commissioned and validated you. Oh, it's quiet in this room. I say, I'll say it again. Stop looking for people's approval when God has 
has approved you. Hallelujah. Isaac didn't let the Philistines' behavior stop him from digging. How many times when we get into circumstances do we stop and do we get a spirit of discouragement that says, hallelujah, when a spirit of discouragement says, you can't do it. You're not good enough. You're not qualified. You don't have the experience. Hallelujah. But you got to gird yourself up in the Lord and say, it is well. Look at your neighbor and say, it is well. It is well. You're a gift. Why? Because God has called you for such a time as this. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. Glory to God. Not only, I, I, I left this out as part of the introduction, Oprah was fired from her news anchor job. She was fired. <laughs> One of the greatest talk show hosts of our time was fired from her day from her news anchor job, and she would not have started her show unless she got fired. Woo! My God, hallelujah. Many times uh, we talk uh, about divine entrances. We Many times uh, we talk about divine exit. What do you do when God sends uh, a divine detour? Everybody say detours. <laughs> Not all routes are going to be pretty. Not all routes uh, are going to, to be straight. Uh, hallelujah. Could it be uh, that God will use uh, resistance uh, to push you forward into your Rehoboth. Everybody say, my Rehoboth is coming. That's a place to shout right there. I said, my uh, Rehoboth is coming. Wide open spaces uh, are coming. I'll say this. God has not given us a spirit of fear. That says, God has not given us a spirit of timidity. There's a thin line, catch me, y'all. Now look up. There's a, there's a real thin line between humility and insecurity. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a real thin line. That's why you can't give do-overs to people that treat you like leftovers. I'll say that one more time. Many times, uh, so there's so many people that stay uh, in toxic uh, environments, uh, and God is saying, I shift you. I have greater in, for, in store for you. I've got big things. I've got big plans. I've got big dreams for you. Now it's time to walk out what I placed on the inside of you. Walk it out. Walk it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know it might seem hard, but do it nervous. I know it might sound be hard, but do it scared. Hallelujah. I know you might have a little bit of money, but start with nothing. Hallelujah. Start anyway. It's time to get started. You're the gift. There's a thin line <laughs> between humility and and insecurity. Whew. I was at a conference this past week, and one of my classmates from CSNI, he was, he said, Rich, come, come with me to this conference. I said, All right, man. I'll go with you to the conference. He was leading, he was leading worship. <laughs> Whole lot of people there. Large, large conference. I get there. I was getting ready. I was getting ready. I was putting my T-shirt on. I was putting my jeans on. I was putting my, my kicks on. I had some tennis shoes I was going to wear. I had my little necklace on. I had my little, my, my, little, um, my little Apple Watch and all that stuff. I was looking fly. I was, I was looking real trendy. I, I, thought I, was looking, I thought I was looking good. I was looking real fly. I thought I'm going to walk up in this conference. Hey, what's up, y'all? And sit in the back. So I'm getting ready for the conference. Holy Spirit says, don't wear that. I still start getting ready. Holy Spirit says, do not wear that. I 
I said, oh, oh, okay, I, 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 let, me, let me go in here. Let me pick out my outfit. Let me go not to my jeans with the holes in them. Let me go pick out the suit. I said, Lord, why are you having me? He said, do, do it anyway because there are some things I'm going to set up for you at this appointment. I said, okay. I, I said, all right, I, I'll, I'll, I'll put the suit on, okay? So I walk through the door of this conference, and next thing you know, the host of the conference then says, hey, hey, Pastor Marcus, we were expecting you. Come to the front, come to the front row. I'm like, I'm not on the flyer. I'm not gonna say nothing. I'm like, that's why you gotta be prepared at all times to speak. You gotta be prepared. you gotta be ready. You never know when an opportunity is gonna open up. They put me on the front row. So I'm laughing with some of the people that's coming in. And it's a lot of people. The room fills up. So I tap somebody on the shoulder. I said, they look like she looked like she the queen of a country or something right there that's coming in. She looked like she the queen. I said, what's she? I'm like, man, she looked like, no disrespect. She, you, you know some people that have dressed from other countries that they have different types of attire. You get what I'm saying? I said, I said she looks like she's royalty. She looks like she's, I'm talking about she had all kinds of, whoa, like, wow. It was, y'all get what I'm saying. Y'all get the point. Y'all, y'all get the point. It was, wow. I said, wow. I, I, that that's that's a very unique outfit that you chose to wear. Wow. So she comes in the room, I joke with her, I said, that looks like the queen. And then next thing you know, everybody gets to standing up. And they said, Hey, we want to welcome the queen of this indigenous country. I can't remember what country it was. And then this is the, the, the princess uh, of this indigenous country right here. And we have this, pr- this queen right here and this princess right here of this country. And they came to America as ambassadors. And they walked in the room. I'm like, have y'all ever seen somebody walk in the room? And they don't necessarily have to have anything fancy on, but their demeanor speaks for themselves. They, 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 they walk into a room and they can command a room. They don't have to open up their mouths, but they can just walk in the room and just the attention comes there. Anybody ever seen that before? She had that type of demeanor. She had that type of persona. I wish I could walk like her, but I can't do that because y'all would call me crazy. Hallelujah. I wish she had a facial expression that said, hey, I'm a queen, and I demand to be treated like one. Woo! Hallelujah. When you walk into your environment, hallelujah, you can't be walking into that new job like a scrub. Hallelujah. You can't walk in there like you, hallelujah, like, you, like you're not a king's kid. Hallelujah. Everybody say, I'm a child of God. And, and that makes us somebody. That means you are qualified. That means you can't go into rooms with your head down, looking depressed, looking busted and disgusted, looking like you've been sucking on lemons all week long. Hallelujah. Pick yourself up, dust yourself off, and act like, hallelujah, God has set you free. If you believe that, shout amen. Amen. walked in there, I said, man, thank God I wore this suit on. I, th- I said, thank God I didn't look crazy. I would have been looking crazy. Thank God I wore this suit. I said, and then she walked up, the queen walked up to me, to me and said, hey, how you doing with her accent? I'm doing well. She said, we would love to, well, we would love for you to come visit our country. Do you have your passport? There are doors that will open up to you when you obey the voice of God. You have to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. You can't get distracted by what's going on around you because God can send a stranger from all the way across the world that will bless your life. Okay, all right, all right, all right. How many expecting some big things to happen in your life? 
Okay, that was only a few people. <laughs> Whew. Thank you, Lord. Everybody shout out. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, say that one more time. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Paying equity had to take place for you to be where you are. Whew, almost. Anybody ever been through any pain before? Whew. <laughs> People think that you just, I'm not just speaking words. I had to go through all kinds of trials to be stand where I'm standing now. Anybody been through some things? Whew. And people, come on here. The suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared, hallelujah, to the glory that shall be revealed unto you. Hallelujah. If you're experiencing gloom or if you're experiencing grief right now, hallelujah, there's a divine shift that's getting ready to take place. And it's called the glory. Everybody shout glory. The presence of God, your demeanor is getting ready to change. Things that you used to do, you don't, you won't want to do them as much anymore. Places that you used to go, you won't want to go there as much anymore. People that you used to fool with, you won't necessarily want to fool with as much anymore. Everybody, God can bring a change in your life. If you believe that, shout amen. Stop giving do-overs to people that make you feel like leftovers. Stop it. Stop it. No, you keep going through this abuse and trauma and neglect. The devil is an entire lie. Come up out of that. You are a woman of God. You don't have to be treated like that. Oh, my. I'm going to say this. Love is not abuse. I don't know why I'm saying that it might be for somebody that's watching under that. Love is not getting knocked in the face. <laughs> Love is not being cussed out. Come on, man. Why do we put up with these situations? Who is quiet in this room? I can hear a, a mic looking nice. It's quiet in here. It's quiet in here. You got to realize that you're him. The Bible says you're, you're fearfully and wonderfully made. Be careful how you let people handle you. Oh, okay. All right. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. It's a thin line. Hallelujah. Between humility and insecurity. Yes, it is. Purpose is an inner disposition. Not an outward obligation. I'm not talking about arrogance. Let me get this straight. I'm not talking about arrogance. I'm not talking about pride. I'm talking about a God-sized confidence that, that you carry that will change your life. Get confidence. Get confidence. Woo. Your, thank you, Lord. Anybody ever rode a bike before? Put your hands in the air if you wrote, ever rode a bike before. When you're little, when you, did you ever ride a bike? And when you were little, when you first learned how to ride a bike, they used to have something. Come on, they used to have something called training wheels <laughs> on 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 those bikes. <laughs> How many remember training wheels? They had training wheels, and training wheels would <laughs> prevent you from hurting yourself. Training wheels would prevent you from falling. Training wheels prepared you and gave you the necessary skills to be able to move forward. <laughs> training wheels were those that divine assistance so you could learn how to pedal. Training wheels were that divine assistance so you could be able to hold the bars the correct way. But so many times, 
we have allowed our training wheels to become a crutch. Ooh, say that again, Pastor Marcus. We have allowed training wheels <laughs> to become a crutch. What is a training wheel? I'm about to do this. <laughs> I'm about to start this business. I'm about to start this podcast. I'm about to I'm about to do this. I'm about to lose weight. I'm about to start this company. I'm about to apply for this house. I'm about to leave this person. I'm about to do this. I'm a, you've been about to do something for the last 50 years. It's that that training wheel season has come to an end. Do it. You're anointed. You're called. He's just he's validated you. He's he's commissioned you. And now it's time for you to walk in your Rehoboth. Everybody say Rehoboth is coming. <laughs> Woo, I'm, about to, I'm about to shout right here. Rehoboth is coming. Rehoboth is coming. Rehoboth is coming. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Woo. Woo. Thank you, Lord. Refuse, for those who are taking notes, refuse for, to settle for less than God's best for your life. How many times have we just settled? Oh, it's, oh, it's always going to be like this. Things ain't ever going to change. I've always been like this. My family's always done it like this. Trust God. I, as I was praying earlier, Ryan, the Lord was just releasing to me that he's raising up spirit-filled innovators. Spirit-filled innovators. Bob, I'm glad you want to know about this. Spirit-filled innovators. He said there are too many people, just release of that, have a blockbuster mindset in a Netflix culture. Say that one more time, I will. There's too many people that have a blockbuster mindset and a Netflix culture and wondering why their wells are clogged up. <laughs> why? Because you keep saying, I'm about to. Just imagine if the owner of Netflix <laughs> would have never started the company. I think I was reading about I was thinking I was reading about Coca-Cola. They only sold like 26 cans the first year. It's time. I pray this is a, a Holy Ghost provoke in this room for you to start whatever it is that the Lord has given you. Okay, I'm gonna say this like this. All right. Everybody say, say it, Pastor. All right, y'all, since y'all said it, I'll say it then now. Y'all freed me. I'm going to blame it on y'all. Y'all say it, say it. You're more than just a nine to five. Oh, ooh, I, could, I could hear that. <laughs> You're more, I'll say it again, two more times. You're more than just a nine to five that you don't even like. <laughs> I got to laugh. Come on here. Because some of us, I, I, I understand you got to work to take care of your family. You got to work to pay for your bills. But it, God has placed a dream and a purpose inside of you. You are not just a nine to five. Until you walk out your God-given destiny, You'll always be working for someone else that walk, that's walking in their purpose. Did I just say that? Ouch. You're more than just, hey, I'm doing this at, at this. Yes, okay, that's fine. But you're more than just that. 
<laughs> you got a skill set. You got a talent. Take this right here. You got an anointing. Because <laughs> if you didn't have an anointing, you wouldn't even be at that place. Okay, all right. What has, what has God given you? Could it be a book? Could it be that teen girls conference, that glitz, glam, and glory conference that, that God's saying, start? Could it be uh, you're supposed to start that, uh, that nail shop, that business? Uh, could it be you're supposed to go back to school? Do it. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. Is this blessing somebody's life today? You got too much pain and equity. The wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. God is raising up. Catch this, y'all. I don't care if this ain't from today's lesson, even the young people. God is raising up his story makers. His story. <laughs> I'll say that one more time. I'll say it slow. His dash S-T-O-R-Y. 50 years from now, will they talk about what you contributed in the life? Whew. Will, your vi will the vision that God has given you, will it live past you? Will it pass on from generations to generations uh, to generations? Uh, I want to live a life, hallelujah, where my kids, uh, where, where my ceiling uh, becomes my kids' floor. I want to set it up where it can be bigger, better, and brighter for them. If you believe that, shout amen. That's why we're digging. I'm almost done. I'm almost done. Whew. Keep on digging. Keep on digging. <laughs> You're more than just a nine to five. Joshua and Kayla. You know, <laughs> they saw the people. You got to possess your land. You got to have a tenacity like Joshua, like Kayla, and say, I, I, no matter what may come, <laughs> it's Joshua 1 and 9. I'm going to possess the land that God has promised me. I don't have any time for negativity. I don't have any time for quarreling. I don't have any time for murmuring. Hallelujah. I want my land that's flowing with milk and with honey. Hallelujah. I will contend for the faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is well. Hallelujah. I, no matter what I'm facing, I'm going to keep plowing. Hallelujah. That means I got to study some more. I'm going to keep it. I'm going to keep plowing because it is well. Press past the resistance till you get your reward. The resistance is an indicator that, there, uh, that a reward is on the horizon. <laughs> Look at your name and say, the reward is the Rehoboth. Woo! Before our Usher team comes forward to receive our tithes and offerings and response cards, here are a few important things happening with our CE family. Life groups are a great way to make friends, grow in community, and to encourage one another. There are many different types of groups to choose from, and we would love to help you find the best fit for you. So check the Life Group bubble on the back of your response card to find out more about the Life Group opportunities at your campus. Life is so much better together. As our ushers come forward to collect our response cards and receive our tithes and offerings, when we joyfully return our finances to God, we count every gift a joy to give, knowing that our generosity pleases God, moves His kingdom forward by changing lives eternally, impacts our surrounding community, and is such a blessing to our entire church family. You can easily give online, mail in a check, or give through the offering bucket in the service. We also recommend taking a few minutes to set up reoccurring giving through our website, which is the best way to give with consistency. 
Thank you for faithfully giving to God through church experience. Thank you for being on mission with us to help more people experience a full life in Jesus Christ. It's been an amazing time here at CE with you. You may have made a commitment during the service today, and if so, we'd love to have you reach out and let us know by scanning the QR code. If you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests, you can scan that same code or go to churchexperience.tv forward slash connect. We hope to hear from you. If you haven't, check out our CE social media, Instagram, Facebook, website, or app. Make sure you do and go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I've loved our time together, and we can't wait to see you next week.